All right, sold.com community. I'm here with Brandon Hobbs for our first speaker series Q&A. Brandon has been with sold.com since the very beginning and has seen a lot of success working our lead. So we figured who better than to uh, kick off this speaker series than Brandon. Brandon, welcome aboard. Thank you. Appreciate uh, you having me on. I've uh, been a big fan of sold for since day one. So it's been exciting to, to have been a part of uh you know, the, the growth and uh, the changes and the excitement. All right. So we're just going to jump right in. Uh, we we want to start off with a high level view of kind of how many years in the business and what areas are you currently servicing? Yeah. So uh, my resale real estate career started about 10 years ago. Uh, I come from a family background of uh, developers and builders. So I grew up in this business. Um when the market changed kind of back in the late 2009, early 2010s, uh, I went into marketing and then ultimately Zillow hired me uh, in 2012. So I was with them in management for a couple of years, uh, realized there's a lot of opportunity in, in this business. Um, and I saw a lot of things being done correctly, incorrectly. Um, and it, it was a great learning experience. So I was with them for two years in management, decided to jump ship open my office on the ground floor of the Zillow building in Irvine, which is uh, not very popular. Uh, <laughs> it was a great recruiting tool. I had a lot of uh, inside sales agents from Zillow join. Uh, and I just went all in. You know, I took the money that I'd accrued and uh, bought $20,000 in zip codes and uh, just went for it. So mm. coming up on 10 years and it's been uh, an exciting, challenging, but a very rewarding time. Amazing. Amazing. I love that little uh, Zillow tip of the hat. <laughs> um, yep, yep. Perfect. Well, again, dropping that much money on zip codes, you obviously saw a lot of leads roll through. And with online leads, as you know, it's like a 2% conversion. They're very top of funnel. So with those Zillow agents that you brought aboard your team and yourself, is there a general approach that you like and when you're starting to work these leads that are just requesting that home valuation? You know, I mean, given the fact that most of the team that I built around me and also myself, we'd taken, um, we'd really had, a, you know, Zillow inside sales was an intense job, right? The follow-up and the follow-through was, was there. So, you know, just understanding from that point that you need to apply that to the same type of mindset. Um, but ultimately, you know, setting up your systems, right. Having a CRM and getting out there in front of these folks. Right. So you get the inquiry on these leads. Uh, first of all, sold does a great job introducing the client and really making me feel comfortable when I reach out to them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that client may have changed their mind, may feel differently about it. Right. That set, you know, right in that, that minute. Uh, but it's really being there in, a, in both a direct approach and also a soft approach. So ultimately mm -hmm. getting them into my CRM, but then taking a step-by-step -step process to making sure that I make it from the first initial contact to getting in, in person with them. And that's going to be the hardest piece, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll take a different approach, right? So we go from initial contact to putting them in our CRM to a physical mailer to a follow-up property valuation. So there's kind of a multi-step process. Mm -hmm. um, and now more than ever, I mean, it's a tough time right now. And if we're not out there working and making the most of these opportunities, they aren't going to go anywhere, right? It, it's a time that we really need to, to step up as agents and, and make the most of the opportunities that we have coming in. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I love that. Just essentially grind away, especially these top of funnel. You just got to continuously follow up. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's great information. Um, so when you are able to, let's say, get convert one of these top of funnel leads into a home valuation appointment, um, how are you building rapport? Like, are you showing up just being like, hey, I'm here for our scheduled appointment? Are you treating it like, oh, I'm just, you know, right place, right time? Like, how do you introduce yourself? And then throughout the appointment, how are you building that trust to uh, to convert this client maybe two months down the line, two weeks, hopefully two days? Yeah. So something I learned really early on in my career um, was setting yourself apart from the very beginning. So ultimately, when I get the sold.com appointment, even the request, obviously I'm confirming it. I'm asking them to, to confirm the appointment with me. I know sold.com is doing the same, but I actually have a marketing package and a seller's guide and a hardcover bound book that's mm. dropped off the night before the meeting and it's got details. It does not have a home valuation, but it has details about me, has details about my team, it has details about how we work. And again, it's just that tangible piece of material that the client is receiving prior to me meeting 
because mm-hmm. again, they're going to see this, they're going to get excited about it. And it might help shift their mindset into, you know what, I, I am excited about this meeting. So that's the first piece in this, in, in the process. Mm-hmm. Uh, and ultimately meeting with them. I mean, uh, meetings do cancel that happens. Um, but from that point forward is the process that we go through once we get a referral in our system from sold.com. So I can walk you through that, or we can talk about that piece. Uh, it's a little bit more detailed, but again, if I have a prospect that's wanting to meet with me, we're getting in touch with them the night before. So they have something mm-hmm. to reference and to ask me questions. So I don't walk in with an uncomfortable meeting where it's like, mm. you don't know anything about me. I don't know anything about you. The other thing I do, um, I look into these folks, right? I'm looking at their LinkedIn. I'm trying to find Facebook. I'm trying to find Instagram because if I see they have golden retrievers, well, guess what? I grew up with three golden retrievers and it just Perfect. helps become a person, not a salesperson. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll tell my clients all day long. Like, if you don't like working with me, then I totally understand. I want you to be happy. There's not a commitment here beyond the fact that I want to work with you and you want to work with me uh, and making sure that's understood, right? This is a very, especially now, this is a very stressful process and transaction for clients. It's way right. different than it was even, even six months ago. And you can't be that guy that's just looking for that, that money out of, their, out of the transaction. So again, building that personal connection right off the bat, it's the first thing I'm going to bring up. If I can find mm-hmm. an information, I will use it to my advantage. I, I met a client from Sold actually. Mm-hmm. The parents were looking to sell their house. They uh, older couple downsizing in a four million dollar house, and I was able to find that the husband went to a university that my godfather went to. Mm. Sure enough, he was wearing a sweatshirt with that logo on it right when I pulled up, and it was like, oh my gosh, how funny! My godfather went there. He was a pharmacist. Oh, I was a pharmacist. What's his name? Now it's not going to happen like that every time. Right. But you always find that piece of information that might tip the scales in your favor, just so they remember you or whatever it may be. Yeah. 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 I love that marketing package that you drop off because a lot of our clients, excuse me, our agents will come back to us and say, Hey, I showed up for my appointment and this person had no recollection of scheduling a free home valuation. I loved what you said about giving them uh, an introduction before the introduction, if you will, of they have material to reference. So you're not just showing up there blind. They don't know who you are. That is, that is a great approach. Um, And then say, you know, you do drop off the marketing package and uh, you get into the home and they start showing you around. How are you diffusing this? I'm just curious, smokescreen, because again, a lot of the sold.com leads are coming from that of just, hey, I want to find out what my home is worth. Are there any good uh, practices that you've developed over the years to really contest that question, obviously, in a very friendly manner? Sure. I mean, I'm one of those people too. Um, we have another child coming and I, I have a lot of realtor friends that I'm letting them show my house and, you know, I'm not sure where I'm going. I don't know what I what my plans are, but underlying that right is a real reason and a real need and so uh gently uncovering that and understanding the process i mean you can get an idea from visiting someone what kind of the intentions are i met with a soul.com referral yesterday uh she actually canceled uh we ended up meeting but she canceled before it and i and just said can we communicate via text Uh, and i was able to just say hey look i can't do my job you asked for evaluation i just want to come meet with you just see the house i'll be in and out in five minutes Um, every situation is different, but at the end of the day, they're raising their hand for a reason and it's our job to figure that out. Right. I mean, we wouldn't be in this Mm -hmm. business if we were not negotiators. And at the end of the day, you know, walking through her property, I found out that she has, she lost some family and she, she wants to move, but she was so nervous to tell anyone this process because Mm -hmm. she's worried what the neighbors are going to think or what her family is going to think. Uh, and it's like, Hey, I get it. I've got things in my life going on. You know, I bring, I bring up my family. I understand where you're coming from. I don't know where I'm going. I've been thinking about it too. Let's think about it together and, you know, take my advice. And if you want to work with me, great. If not, totally understand. However, my biggest thing is when I drop that book off the night before, there's no valuation in there because it's doing that kind of total disservice by making up a number because I could be way off or spot on or whatever the range may be. And it also gets me in the door, right? Hey, your house, here's kind of what I'm thinking, but I could be totally wrong because your house is probably way more beautiful than I imagine, whether Mm -hmm. or not obviously that's the case. We need to feed into that piece of it. So again, it's really setting that side up for it. Um, And to the point that I can't get a hold of them, we can talk about that next of what I do, Uh, but it's really just making sure it's a soft sell. These, These people 
do feel like they're just interacting with the website. Um, I'm partners with other networks that don't do it as well as sold. And they really kind of dupe the client into these valuations. And so mm -hmm. from my standpoint, sold, you know, referrals are going to be challenging to convert like anyone's, but they do set you up better for success. And I think that that seller guide that I'm happy to share with anyone uh, that's listening, it's like a mm -hmm. 30 page guide. Uh, every one of my team gets one and it talks about our breadth of coverage area as well as myself and some of the things we do. But again, I can tell you right now, most of the agents aren't doing that. They're not bringing something beforehand. They're taking this mm -hmm. mindset that it's an online valuation. Like I don't want to spend a bunch of time on it. Well, what else are you spending time on right now? First of all, right. Second, <laughs> right. Um, you know, it's just important to show that you're committed to the process. This, the gal yesterday was so impressed that within five minutes of her canceling our meeting, I already sent over everything I planned to meet with her via email because I didn't plan to present it in email. And she couldn't, she, she was blown away that something was prepared for her and then felt bad about canceling our meeting. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I think a big takeaway with your approach is that you make every meeting personal to the consumer, right? You, they feel like you've taken the time out of your day to prepare something special for them. And that just makes them seem less like a cattle call, if you will, of just somebody running down a drip marketing campaign, because those emails are easy to send out. They're very effective for mass calling, but something like an extra step that sets you yourself apart, like this marketing package is great. So thank you for that. And yeah, if anybody's curious about that, um, Brandon and I will link up after uh, we're done here and see if there's a, a link or uh, just a format that you guys can browse that packet because that feels like a huge source of material for working these online leads. Um, so perfect. So you go through the meeting, uh, you know, it's great. The lady that you're speaking of is impressed with your marketing package. You're compiling your notes. How do you leave the meeting? What, what is really your follow-up expectation setting? So realistically, um, I, I do not talk valuation when I'm at the house. I know that seems contrary to a lot of agents. I'm sure that that, but it's not, it's not beneficial because in my opinion, and again, there's plenty of agents that do things differently. When I leave the meeting, I truly want to go back and relook at the comps that I printed in a book. I'm not, I don't sit with my client and flip through the pages of the houses. No one wants to do that, right? No one wants to sit right, you know, arm to arm with them and, and point out, well, look at this finish on this kitchen or whatever. It's not beneficial to anyone. It's not respectful of their time because my job should be to come up with a number and they, they already know, likely they've already seen these houses. So I'm going to let them know, Hey, Thank you for your time. Pleasure meeting with you. Really excited for the opportunity to work with you. I'm going to go back to my office and I'm going to really give you a dialed in valuation of what I think I can realistically get for your home and ideally get you multiple offers, right? Like the goal mm -hmm. here is to price it effectively, not overprice it, not underprice it, but price it to drive a result. Mm -hmm. And then I have something to follow up with them on. So I've got a, I've got a call to action. Now, yeah. also, if it's a very high intent client um, that I feel very strongly about, I'll pick up on pieces throughout the house. If I see they like wine or if the husband likes cigars or whatever it may be, I know this seems crazy, but I'll have couriered over later that day. Thank you for meeting with me. Here's a nice bottle of wine to think about what we talked about, whatever it may be. <laughs> yeah. Look, if I'm getting the upfront from sold, I'm not spending 20 grand with Zillow anymore. I'm getting these referrals. The investment that I can make that may cost me a hundred bucks per lead that I have met with, it's worth it tenfold. Um, and it's just the tact in which you do it. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, I, I had one client that I found out it was a house in Newport coast, another sold opportunity a while back, her mother passed away. So I called the nicest florist in Newport and had a very beautiful bouquet scent. Now they've not transacted yet, but this is somebody that they have a $14 million house. They're going to be buying a waterfront house. I'm helping the daughter with something right now. Mm -hmm. They don't think of any other agents, even though Newport's highly competitive, because it's these small pieces that, you know, you convert it from, they clicked a button online. Well, that should lead into somebody's hands that care. So yeah. Again, the end of the the end of the meeting, it's really I'm going to be back in touch with you. And again, back in touch means hours, not days, not mm -hmm. not not ten hours. It means you know that's the first priority. And again, I probably know the number when I leave the house, anyways. But I think that's the biggest thing too is communicating. The minute you stop communicating with these leads is the minute they decide, mm, you know what, he was fine, but I'm going to try again. Let's let's see what else is out there. So right. that's the biggest piece for me is is having a clear, defined action of what they expect after and then what I deliver after the meeting. Perfect. Yeah, I love it. Just honesty, right? Like not over promising. This is what I'm going to do for you. And this is what you should expect. 
that gives everyone a defined timeline and, you know, it can hold even the consumer accountable of like, hey, I said I'd have this to you by this date. Here it is. What are your thoughts? And so it just gives everyone more structure. And speaking of structure, um, we do hear this a lot from our agents that go on these appointments. The fee structure. I know it's always a beast of a question when you're wheeling and dealing in an appointment and then you get hit with, okay, but what's your percentage? What is this going to cost me uh, to list with you? How do you how do you spin that into an advantage during that appointment? You know, I mean, every situation is different. I mean, you're going to find price sensitivity out the gate, mostly with these leads very early on, even in the initial conversations. Um, I don't believe the good thing about sold is it's it it's protecting the integrity of the agent's job. Um, whereas a lot of other partners I have are are not. And so thankfully, I'm, I'm not facing that nearly as much as I am with other partners. Uh, but you know, the reality is, this is a very challenging time. And in the, in the 10 years I've been doing this, this is the hardest I've had to work um, mm -hmm. and creative with what I'm doing. And so in terms of when I bring up commission, it's not nearly as hard as it was maybe a year ago, because at the end of the day, I'm letting them know, hey, I'm going to be working, first of all, a lot harder for you and likely showing your house a lot more to get the people through that even qualify, right? So we're, we're going down a lot further path. You're absolutely correct. Your home is a wonderful home. And a year ago, we wouldn't be having a totally different conversation. I'd be totally willing to work with you on commission. But how about we do this? Let's agree at five or 6% or whatever the number is. And, and let's agree on a result. And if we can, if I can get that result, let's, let's maintain the integrity of my commission. And if we don't look, I'm an open book. I'm here to work with you. I want to be honest, straightforward. And if I'm working on this for four or five months, I think I've definitely earned that. But again, Hey, if, if we have a result that you're happy with in a very short period of time, I'm also here to, to be fair. And uh, you know, that's something that we can consider now taking that approach. Typically I don't ever cut my commission. Even after that happens, it's a willingness to show some type of concession. Um, but at the same time, if I price it right and they're happy, it's, it tends to fall on the back burner. Now, every client's going to be different. One of my clients uh, recently, we just sold a, a very nice multi-million dollar house in Yorba Linda and price sensitive for sure. Uh, we'd done a few deals with him. He interviewed us traditionally, even though we closed on his replacement property and did a great job for him. He put us through the ringer and uh, we did agree to, if we double ended it to cut him a, a deal, which, you know, we had a double ended offer. Mm -hmm. and we guided them in the direction of the other offer. It didn't make sense. I don't prefer to do that, but even showing that we would make a concession there still protected our list side commission. So we didn't necessarily have to adjust our list side commission when we were willing to show that we had some concession there. And that's the perfect example, by the way, of a client that I knew what I wanted to list his house at mm -hmm. and I knew what it was worth very firmly, but he, I knew he had an idea. So we went through the entire process and I did not tell him what I wanted to list his house for until I had all the staging, all the marketing, all the photos done, which also, again, may seem different and backwards, but what it does is it gets the clients committed to you. You're working hard for them. Um, and then I said, look, I, I want to sit down with you. I already know a range of where we need to be, but this is a reason for you and I to come together, look through the photos, and then we can discuss the price that I think the market's willing to bear. Now, this may not work on every situation or maybe not important for every situation, but what it did was he came back to me. We actually collaborated on it and I wanted to list it at 2250 He wanted to list it at 2275 and we ended up at 2250 which, mm -hmm. which is what we got a result in three days. Wow. Uh, but again, it, it was a nice open talking point to allow him to want to be involved in the transaction. So yeah. that's kind of a tail end of the same approach I take before I list a house. But yeah. I really, you know, I really wanted him to see the end result and how hard we're working on the front end. Like I, so I, I did everything and brought it back to him and said, here's what I feel the price is. How great do you think it looks? And there was a lot of excitement around that piece too. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. And yeah. again, that's why the commission was not, that's why the commission was protected in, in that sense. Yeah. We, we did a lot and it showed out the gate how much we were doing. Yeah. But there is a, there is a way to put it where, Hey, I'm working with you on this and we both want the same end result. So mm -hmm. having just that, that mentality, I think makes that the structure conversation a little less intimidating. And it also shows the consumer like, Hey, I'm on your team here. I I'm not here for just commission. Like I want yeah. to help you. And it just goes back to what you've been saying this whole time of make every consumer that comes through sold or just any lead that you get 
make it as personal as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, find that common ground and then make sure that they know that, hey, this agent is busting his butt for me and it's not for the money. It's for my sake and my circumstances. So I love that. Um, just to, uh, to pivot a little bit, because we have been talking a lot about during the appointment, obviously with these um, online leads, you're going to be seeing, um, it's just going to be traditionally a uh, cold calling, you know, email blast or door knocking. There's not going to be a lot of scheduled appointments. So how are you working the, those leads where there's no appointment set through sold.com? You're yeah. just, again, cold calling. Do you have scripts? Like what is your approach there? So uh, just on the front end, I don't cold call and I do not door knock. Um, I I probably should change that. It's just nothing. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Who I am, I, I don't like it. It's uncomfortable and uh, I don't like people knocking on my door. Now, again, that's, <laughs> that's, that's not to say it's, it's something you shouldn't do. Um, mm -hmm. but I will say as of the last 60 days, you know, I have about 400, 400, 500 uh, leads in my uh, sold database. Okay. And recently, I took to a strategy to go what am I doing with these people and why am I not doing more with them? Right. So uh, what I recently did was, and I can share this with all of you and share all the tool sets, but what happens is when a lead comes in, I can't reach them or they go to a, to a, I guess, a nurturer status. They're in follow-up bus. So they all live in follow-up bus. Gotcha. So reaching out to them immediately, phone, text, personally, no automation, of course. I'm also going in through follow boss and we're integrated with a handwritten card company and I'm sending them a handwritten card mm. with my branding. So it's got, it's got a beautiful sunset on the bay and the water. It's got the logo on it and it's got a handwritten card and it's like, Hey, I, you know, I'm super excited to possibly work with you or meet. I change it based on kind of the situation where the house is Yeah, in that card within two days. So they've got calls, emails, and texts. They've got a handwritten card. Then my system is moving them from follow boss to one of our partner systems called real scout. Real Scout's automatically creating a valuation uh, for their property and now putting them on a drip campaign monthly for that property valuation. It's got all my branding. It's got a value range, so they don't tighten up the value too much. So obviously the agent's involved. Um, and then from there, we are putting them into another, another system called Celebrity Agent. And this all ties mm -hmm. together. And again, happy to give anyone a workflow on this. But it's moving into Celebrity Agent with their address and their name. And what it's doing, this is a new system we're recently using. It's an incredible system. But it's pulling MLS data for their address. And then it's mm. crafting emails based on that. So let's say mm. they have 123 Main Street. They were looking at selling. That client or that potential lead is going to receive a, hand, or a personal email from me. There's no unsubscribe on it because it's one-to-one. -one, and it's going to be filled out and say, you know, hey, Jenny, I just want to let you know your neighbor five doors down at, you know, one, two, nine, you know, main street mm -hmm. just sold their house in 10 days. I have some great insight on this. Please let me know. So mm -hmm. that was an opportunity. Actually, the lady I met with yesterday mm -hmm. came in September 11th on sold, mm -hmm. never heard from her at all. I sent her a card, did the whole thing I normally do. She'd been receiving these other emails from me and she called me and I was at school pickup and I had no idea who it was. Thankfully, follow <laughs> boss connected the call ID and I was able to immediately say, Oh, Ha, you're on Roan Drive. And I'd love to. And she said, Great, can we meet tomorrow at one? So that's a really cool system. It is not cheap, but it allows me to not only use this for sold, but I can use it for my Zillow leads. And I'd be happy to share it with you guys. There's so much more that it does. But we basically go again initial inquiry, text, phone call, email that's personal, handwritten card, moves into Real Scout as well, then goes into that third party system, Celebrity Agent. And the Real Scout is so nice because, you know, sold.com, correct me if I'm wrong there's no follow-up with evaluation or a, a tease of evaluation. So this is the layer that helps us secure, okay, I went to sold, now I'm getting an evaluation there. And I do not get unsubscribes because it becomes this process that they believe that that was the end game and result. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it's got all my information on it. So it's, it's a detailed process. Yeah. Um, but it's awesome. And I'm getting leads, you know, sold.com for me typically converts anywhere from like six to nine, six to 12 months. Okay. But I've seen in the last few weeks, a, a ton of influx of activity based on these new tools. So again, happy to talk about them, but uh, you cannot take these opportunities and call them once and blame yeah. that the, the lead source is wrong. If somebody is raising their hand and they truly do own the house, that's the first thing I do, of course, is check title. But if they do mm -hmm. own the house, there's a reason they're doing this, whether unfortunately the market has been impactful on their financials and they need to make a sale 
or you know they're downsizing or they're moving out of state. Uh, there's something there, and it's as simple as uncovering it. And it's now through a plethora of tools that we're doing this, but it's been very mm. successful. We have 50 or so listings. Uh, it's 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 definitely going well in a very challenging time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, again, you're you're highlighting something that I think a lot of agents oversee is they sign up for sold.com or they sign up for one of these CRM tools that you're listing out and they think that's enough. Whereas you're taking a versatile approach of incorporating as many tools as you can. And unless it's producing the results you want, not being content with that, because we do have a lot of agents that go out and they get hit with that. Oh, I'm not interested in selling my home. And they kind of just throw up their hands the tools and tips that you have mentioned all just circulate around this. Keep trying. Like, you know, the, you got to keep working these leads. There isn't an easy lead. I mean, I was talking with a, an agent maybe two weeks ago where his first um, active appointment with sold.com, the person was ready to go right then and there. He got a listing agreement, but I mean, that's like hitting the lottery, right? So for the most part, you're going to have to implement all these different tools. And yeah, our community would be hugely appreciative of you sharing those. Again, I, I love the transparency about it not being cheap, but hey, maybe add one of those many tools that you reference and you can start seeing better success. So thank you for all that info. Yeah, and one, one thing, you know, the first lead I ever received on Sold, um, it was so new that your your now VP uh, was actually introducing the lead to me personally because you guys were. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was an, he was an excellent he's an excellent guy. He's still a client of mine, and he listed a property and he he said, Brandon, I have to get this other agent to try. I really liked you, but I'm going to move forward with this agent, and I'll let you know. And I, mm. and, oh, hey, no worries, I I get it, no no problem. Ended up not working out. I ended up selling it. Got him the result he wanted. I'm still in touch with him. He's a great guy. We're going to be selling his now three or four times more expensive personal home. Mm. Um, but again, you can't shut the door. And if you're in it, you know, not a nice person, uh, it goes a long way. You know, yeah. it's so much easier to, to just be gracious about it and, and focus on, on moving past that piece. And that was a great example of it. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, again, happy to share those tools. The one thing I want everyone to hear though, too, though, that seller's guide and that bound book the night before, mm -hmm. it's, really, it's really crummy to cancel on somebody when they've like, done something already for you and that yeah, yeah. tables so that's a, just something that i have them ready to go i customize the first page i hand sign it um i also do that for my sold buyers and so mm -hmm. if I have new buyers i'm meeting i'll print out a buyer tour and have my assistant deliver it with all okay. the books seen the next day mm. so that they can flip through them so it's kind of a tangible piece but again that's not related to this but it's just something to take it to that yeah. next Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we're coming up on time. I just want to ask you uh, one last question. And we've kind of already been harping on it. This, again, has been such a great conversation. If you're new to the network or if you've been in the network for a while, but we do onboard weekly a lot of new agents into our community. So are there any overarching words of advice you can give to somebody that just joined our network? Again, this is a generalized statement and I've got, you know, I've got family that I've tried to help in this business and get them started and it, it didn't go well during this, this six month period of kind of the market changing, but you know, it, it treat this like a job. I'll tell you right now, the reason that I was able to be successful and, and come out the gate is I had a very hard job at Zillow and I, I applied that to this job. And if you truly treat it like a job and treat it like these opportunities are, are somebody raising their hand for help or for the next stage in their life. And you don't treat it like, Hey, you know, you didn't answer me. You didn't reach out to me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm done. Personalize the process. I can tell you right now, we're in a, you know, a hyper digital place. I love getting mail. When I get a piece of mail, <laughs> physical mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty epic. And if you look at the luxury brands out there, you look at the Pradas and you look at the Gucci's and you look at those high-end retailers, those salespeople in the stores are sending handwritten thank you cards still. They're doing these mm -hmm. things because they're high dollar transactions. Why are we not doing more of that? And I think my advice to them is, have a system, but make it personal. And let me know if I can give you ideas on making it personal because I I really have been trying to do that, especially as the market's changed, uh, just realizing I need to make it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, perfect. Brandon, thank you again so much for hopping on, sharing all the info. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully get some of your uh, tools that you use in the uh, show note captions. But yeah, can't thank you enough for your time. 
Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Again, huge shout out to Brandon Hops for hopping on and sharing a bunch of great information and even his own marketing material. I did want to let you guys know about our guaranteed display program. What this does is this will boost you to the top of your zip codes referral list. Brandon is living at the top, right? He's a great agent. He's top producing. So he's getting all those referrals. Honestly, if you're seeing that your natural rank is 10 or below, you're not going to be really seeing the volume that Brandon does. So a great way to boost yourself to that number one or two slot is our guaranteed display program. And this is the kicker. Because you guys attended today's webinar, we're doing a $50 zip code promo where the savings are ridiculous. I see our agent success team has posted a link. So go ahead, click on that, fill out your info, and a member of our sales team will reach out to you and get talking about pricing on those savings and the specific zip codes that you'd like to sponsor. All right, guys, thanks again, and we will see you in the next webinar.